Well, hello, everybody. It's wonderful to have you with us. I pray wherever you are that you know that God is with you exactly in the place where you are. Well, today I'm going to come back to a topic I've talked about many, many times. And the reason I keep coming back, it was what a priest used to do to me all the time. He used to come back and say to me, are you praying? How's your personal relationship with God? How's your personal prayer time? And I want to talk again about doing that because I realize it's something that we can so often fall away from. So my prayer for you is that as we go through this step by step, and many of you will know it, ask yourself the question, are you doing it? And is it drawing you more closely to God? Today, I want to talk about something that I hate talk about very often, and that is a personal prayer life, having a personal time with God. When I was younger, a Catholic priest taught me how to pray. And one of the things he used to say to me is, is if you want to have a relationship with God, you have to spend time with God. You have to talk with God. You have to meet with God yourself. He used to say to me all the time, you can't have a friendship or a relationship with anybody unless you spend time with them. He said, you can't fall in love with someone. You can't depth a relationship unless you commit time. And he said, it's exactly the same in your relationship with God that you need to commit time. And what he used to say to me and what I learned to do is he used to say to me, not in bed, not in the shower, not in front of the television, not lying down. It's not that you can't pray in all those places, but he said, you want to be deliberate about it. And then he used to say to me, he said, I want you to pray, just pray 15 minutes a day, 15 minutes a day and don't miss, don't miss. And when I would see him, he'd say to me, how many days in the last week? And whilst that initially felt a little bit intense, the point is it was a great blessing to me because it taught me the power of developing a personal relationship with God. I'm a Catholic. I go to Mass on Sundays. I pray the rosary. I do a whole number of things that are liturgically done within the church. When I go to church, and many of you do the same, many of you go to other Christian churches as well. And what he said to me, you'll find, is that if you develop your personal relationship with God, when you go off to the corporate, the community and the prayer experience that you have with others, the sacraments that you celebrate with others, they will have far greater depth and meaning. And want to know something? He was absolutely correct. It just completely transforms the way you do church. And so let me talk a little bit about how to have a prayer time. Now, you might have heard me talk about this before. You might have heard others talk about it before. And you might stop and go, well, I know it all. Yeah, I know it all. And that's what I used to say. But he would still ask me. And for years, he asked me. Years, he asked me. Because he knew it takes a long time to develop a relationship with God. Here's a few things that I know. Is that, is that uh, find a place. Find a place that you can pray in as regularly as you can. It could be in a special chair. And some people go and buy a chair. I know people that have. I've prayed pretty much in the same chair for the last 30 years. And secondly, pray in the same place. Uh, I have a lounge chair in my lounge. If my children, when they were growing up, came into there and I was sitting in that chair, they would all go, Dad's praying. Rosemary, my wife, she used to pray at the end of the kitchen table. I know people who pray in all sorts of different places. I know business people who go to work and sit at their desk and pray at their desk where they do their work through the day. You might have somewhere where you can sit uh, or stand or even kneel or whatever you want to do at the various times you want to do it, but find a regular place. The advantage of a regular place and even going to the trouble of buying yourself a uh, buying yourself a chair to do it in, is that you will get into the attitude and the spirit of prayer very quickly, very quickly. So I can't encourage you enough. Uh, over the years, people have sent photos to me of their prayer chair or their prayer place. And you can do that. Uh, you can do that as well uh, if you want. So that's really important. Things that I take to prayer is I take my Bible. I'll talk about that in a minute. I always take, uh, for me, I take a cup of coffee most of the time or a cup of tea when I go to pray. Uh, I take a pen and I take what I call my prayer journal, which is just literally a notebook with lines in it. Uh, because for me, one of the things that the this priest said to me years ago, he said to me, Bruce, he said, uh, I want you to write your prayers down. And I remember thinking to myself, write my prayers down? What do you mean, write my prayers down? He said, I want you to write them down. And, 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 he, and I said, why? And he said, well, 
he said, well, uh, he said, do you ever find that you're in the middle of praying when you are and all of a sudden you're thinking about what's on television tonight or you think about what you're cooking for dinner or you're thinking about work or you're thinking about one of the children or you're thinking about something else? And he says it's not that God can't use all of those things to talk to you. He said, but, but what happens is that, is that it's so easy to be distracted and before you know it, you've spent your time having you know, 15 minutes or 20 minutes or half an hour or five minutes uh, thinking time, but they weren't praying time. He said, write your prayers down. And what I want to do is give you like a, just an acronym, some letters that you could use to focus the steps of prayer in your life. And so what I do is I write down, when I start my prayer, I write down the day and I write the date. I then write, I then write uh, each of these letters down and then I write something before, beside them. You know the advantage of writing your prayers down is you can do what I do. I can go back to the 2nd of October, 19... Uh, 82 when I got married and I can read what I wrote in my prayer journal that day. I can read the prayer. It's not a diary. It's the your, it's the, a record of your relationship with God. I can go back and read what I wrote on the day my in, in prayer that when my dad died. I can go back and I can read some of the big decisions I've made and the directions that I've gone in my life. I can go back and what it does, it becomes a record of the spiritual journey of your life. So here are some letters that you could write down that write down to the word personal, to the word personal. And uh, as you do, I pray that this would bless you. So I would start my prayer, I'd write the time, I'd, I'd write the date, uh, the day and the date, and then I write the time I'm starting to pray. And the reason I do that is because I then always looking at my watch going, when did I start? How long? If you decided to pray for seven minutes or 15 minutes, I recommend that you pray for 15 minutes every day, doing nothing else but pray. I would write down there that it is whatever the time is, nine o'clock or 12 o'clock or nine o'clock, and I just write nine o'clock and, uh, and then I begin. And then the very first letter of personal prayer, of personal prayer is the letter P. And P stands for perspective. Is when we come before God, what we want to do is we want to get perspective between who God is and who we are. So I write in my journal, God, you made everything. I can do just the things I can. God, you have always existed. You have never had a creator. God, I know that you created me. God, I had a beginning. Oh, God, you've never had a beginning date. You don't have an end date because you are eternal. And I can, stop, God, I can say to God, God, you know the days of my life, the day I was born, and you know the day when I will ascend into heaven or go to heaven. Um, and so, so perspective, what it does is it puts you in the light of who God is. I say things to God like, God, you created everything. I can't grow hair on my head. And so what, by putting it in perspective, in a, you know, God, you are perfect. God, there are so many things I do which I just wish I didn't do. Immediately puts us into perspective where we realise that we are at, at worship of God. And, and perspective is an act of worship because it sees God in his perfection and it sees us for who we are created by God. God is the creator. We are the created. And so perspective as we begin brings our mind and our heart and our senses to where God is. Now, as I approach the seat where I'm going to pray, before where, where I'm going to pray, I often will say to God, God, I am not coming here to pray to you today, to talk to you and tell you things. I'm coming to having an encounter with you. Would you speak to me? Would you be present with me? And then I get out my prayer journal and I write the time in the day and the letter P in it right there. And then, I, and then the next what I do is I write the letter E and E stands for everything. God, it's so easy to let you slip out of my life. See, God wants to be the centre of our life. If our life is like a big circle, so to speak, there's lots of things in our life. God seeks to be the central part of our life. But life is so busy, we keep pushing God out. And so coming back at the beginning of our prayer time to say, God, I put you back at the centre of my life, as first in my life, as the general manager of my life, as the Lord of my life, as centre of my life, is very important. So P stands for perspective. God, you made everything. This is me. E stands for everything. God, I put you back at the centre of my life. Then R, the R in personal, stands for repentance. What does repentance mean? It means to change direction. It means to change direction, to come back to where we're meant to be. It doesn't take much 
to, to fall away. So I would often think since the last time I prayed 24 hours ago, I'll stop and go, Lord, would you forgive me for this? Would you forgive me for that? I'm sorry. And then I fix that relationship with God. And what does Scripture tell us? Scripture tells us that God forgives when we ask His forgiveness, right, and restores completely. Uh, now, you, now, when you're looking at your life and you're thinking to yourself, What's a, how would I examine my heart? You might, you might do this to what I call fabric because we're all made of a substance, aren't we? And so I would, when I'm examining my conscience and thinking about are there things I need to ask God's forgiveness, is, I'll, I'll stop and I'll go, so what's my faith like? What's my faith like been? Have I, my faith in God in the last 24 hours. What's my attitudes been like? What have I been thinking about? What have my behaviours been? Uh, what have I done in those sorts of things? Is God, would God be pleased with my actions and my behaviours? Uh, what are my relationships like uh, with others? Uh, are there people that I need to go and ask forgiveness of? Have I, have, have I, am, am I good with people? Um, I stands for integrity. What's integrity? Integrity is who we are when no one's looking. Am I the same when people see me as I am in private? And, and the C in fabric stands for conversations, my speech. Jesus said what comes out of our mouth is an indication of our heart. And so an examination of our conscience might be looking at the fabric of who we are, our faith, attitude, behaviour, relationship, integrity and conversations. And where we th feel we've fallen short, we just ask God's forgiveness. And want to know something? And then it's done. And you ask God's forgiveness and God most certainly forgives. Often for me as a Catholic going to the Sacrament of Reconciliation, I will often look at the fabric of my life in preparation for it. So P, P stands for perspective. You are God. You made everything. This is me. Uh, uh, e stands for everything. God, I put you back at the centre of my life. You are everything to me. Uh, repentance means to come back to God. And, and, and the P, E and R, they kind of all happen at the same time. It's not like they are different movements, but they're in a sense one movement. And sometimes it can be very quick, uh, only a, a minute or two uh, to do that. The, uh, the next uh, in personal, I have two R's, I can't spell, is the word real, real. And this is where I spend a good amount of time in my life. This is where, I, this is where it's important to be honest before God. God, this is how I'm feeling. This is how I'm going. This is how things are within my life. Uh, this is where, the, where I, I'm able to come to God and I'm going to say, I say things to God sometimes like, God, you know, thank you for blessing me a lot. God, I'm not very happy with you right now. I don't understand why that war is taking place. I don't understand why these things are happening in my life. Lord, I've asked you for things and you haven't done them. There have been other times when I've gone, God, you are so good. Look at what's happened. Being real is to be honest. The Bible tells us there's no secrets. God has no secrets. So being real, and so I write, where am I at uh, in my life there? And then, and then the, the S in personal stands for salute. Uh, one of the definitions of salute means to greet with a kiss. In other words, to worship. And what you might do is you just might make a whole list of words that you could put down about God. God, I praise you and adore you. So you know, you know how sometimes you don't know what to say to God? God, I praise you. I adore you. I glorify you. I honour you're the first and the last. You're the King of kings. You're the Lord of all. Lord, you keep everything going. Lord, I, I can't do anything without you. Uh, to, to, to worship is to tell God who God already knows he is. And what it does is it transforms us. To worship is to come before God and to acknowledge who he is in his perfection, that God knows everything, that God is everywhere, and that God is all-powerful. Ultimately, when we have worshipped God, and that might take a couple, few minutes, um, it always leads to silence. And this is where uh, the O for observe, uh, the silence, means to just sit. Listen to your heart. Listen to the inside of you. Listen to the voice of God. It's here where I've made many of the biggest decisions of my life. After, see, after worship, because Scripture tells us that God dwells in the praises of his, of his people. So after worship, that's often the time when I certainly hear God very loudly in my life at times. That's where I've made many of the big decisions of my life. Um, and it's sometimes the time when I've made some of the big decisions of my life when I realise I've been off course and I've had to come back. And so you might sit with God just in silence for a little while. 
Uh, then the N in personal stands for nourish. In the Bible, if you have a look in the Gospels in particular, and, and many, there's little sections like Jesus fed 5,000, uh, uh, the Beatitudes, and you, you, you know Jesus is crucified, and there's just these little stories. What you might do is just go take one of those little stories and just read that. So after you've done your worship and you've listened, read the story. And because you're in a place of still listening, it's amazing what you, you can hear. And you might ask yourself five questions whilst you're looking. What do I see when you've read that little passage of Scripture? What do I think it means? Uh, what, what do you think God is saying to you uh, in it? What are you going to do about it? And what, uh, what are you going to pray about it? You might ask those five questions. You might ask those five questions after you've read a passage of Scripture. And it's amazing how God speaks to you through that. And so there's this, the first section in a sense of PE perspective, everything and being real um, and repentance is all about putting ourselves and being honest before God. And then this second section of our prayer, which is about the salute, the worship, uh, the observation, li listening to God in our heart, nourish, listening to God through scripture is where God really speaks to us. And many of the, as I say, many of the big decisions were, that I've made to start ministries, to things that Rosemary and I have decided in our life together that we've prayed about moving home have all happened in that section of my prayer. And then the A in personal starts for ask. Jesus said all the time, ask the Father in my name. And we know it's the Holy Spirit that works in us. You don't want to get to heaven and find out that God's got a whole pile of things he'd have done for you if, if you'd just asked. You want to ask God. Um, to, to bless you. So make your list. In the back of my prayer journal, because remember I'm writing down P-E-R-S-O-N-A-L and I'm writing something for each of these. In the back of my prayer journal, I often keep my list of all the things that I'm asking God. And then L for leave. L for leave. We can stop and go, well, that means just pack up and go home. Uh, often, or, or go, go and do what else we're going to do. L, the leave can often be the most important. In Vatican II, which was when the leadership of the Catholic Church all got together in the 60s, early 60s, and they asked the question, what's the role of the church and the place of the church in the modern world? One of the things they talked about was the, the fact that different, different people in different vocations have different roles. And one of the things they talked about for lay people, that's people who are not priests, brothers, nuns, pastors, lay people, is that their holiness, the, the Vatican II documents said, the church said to us, was found that when they were God's representatives in the world, that God was calling people to be in the world. So what we do is we take our prayer time, we take all of that time we've just had with God, and then we go to our family, we go to our husbands or we go to our wives, we go into our work, we go into the places where we are, and we are God's presence where we are. And because we've been in this moment of prayer personally, because maybe we're connecting corporately with our community, our religious community. We then go into the world and we are the presence of God wherever we are, wherever we are. Now, personal prayer is something that you've got to practice. So commit to 15 minutes a day. Just commit to 15 minutes a day, 10 minutes a day, 7 minutes a day. You decide and then do it every day. Get yourself an exercise book and write out your prayers. You'll be stunned you'll be stunned by what that will come to mean to you in time. One word of caution. When you get to the word repentance, P-E-R, perspective, everything, repentance, it's the only time you don't write in your prayer journal, do not write down your sins or your wrongdoing, so to speak. You don't want your prayer journal falling into someone else's hands and they being able to read those things. Do not write them there. So, personal prayer, perspective, who, God, who are you? This is me. Everything, God be at the centre of my life. Repentance, I'm coming back to you. Being real, this is who I truly am. And salute, worship, God, I, I want to express my worship of you. O, I sit in silence and I listen. N, I look at the scriptures to be nourished by your word. A, I ask for for the things that I need in my life, trusting that you will have your way. And then L means I leave and go into the world where you have called me to be, being the presence of God. I want to know something, if you practice personal prayer, if you teach yourself the discipline of personal prayer, it'll change your life. I will forever be grateful to that Catholic priest who said to me, Bruce, develop a personal relationship with God. It will affect everything. Pray, pray, pray every day. 
This is the way that I've been praying for nearly 40 years of my life, most days of the year. And I would encourage you to do the same. Loving Father, I thank you today that you call us into a relationship. Allow us to experience you, to hear you, and to grow in our relationship, our personal relationship with you by practicing, by doing personal prayer every day. And Father, we make this prayer in the name of Jesus through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, Lent 2022 has only just begun and it's not too late to join with us. If you want to receive the daily devotional Lent videos, you can go to this address and you'll receive them. Lent is an amazing moment in our lives every year in these few weeks when we get the chance to draw more closely to God. I pray you join me every day uh, throughout Lent 2022. Hey, don't forget to make a time to pray. Find your personal time with prayer. I look forward to seeing you next time. And don't forget, wherever you are, God is never far from you.